Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Protect the Boot. Um, I'm, I'm here joined. Well, my name is Grant Sashery. I'm here joined by my co-host Jason Lejern. Uh Pretty early morning, but in, right now we got to wake up, and get ready for. I got school. Jason's got work, and you know I still attend LSU, of course. But uh, but yeah, we just had a huge weekend of football. Not you know not like a bunch of like. Heavy hitter games like we've had in previous weeks during regular season, but they had some. They had some pretty good games as well. Um, and you know, I think you know this kind of is a little appetizer before we get to this weekend, which there's a lot of heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. Second round is always going to have the better teams. You know, everyone out, everyone's playing. So yeah, just to start off the show, um, let's recap some of the. Uh, well, let's go through the, like the scores real quick. Let yeah. you know who advanced in the first round. Then, sure. we can, then we can get going. Um, first, starting off with non select uh, for Division One non select. Uh, Rustin, of course, had a buy, so they automatically get back to the second round. Westgate won 27 to 10 over, uh, over Terrebonne. They will face Rustin in the next round. Walker defeated Benton 55 to 26. Um, and North Shore upset uh, West Monroe 9 to 7. They will play each other in the next round. Um, Santa Mon beat thirty. Uh, Santa Mon beat Washita Parish thirty-three, and Sam Houston um, Mandeville defeated Sam Houston fifty-three six. They will play each other in the second round. Uh, South Side defeated Thibodeau 42, 42 to nine. Airline had a bye, so they will play each other in the second round. Uh, Destro had a bye. Uh, Bell Chase defeated Parkway forty-three to six. Destro and Bell Chase will face each other in the second round. Salmon defeated West Washington 2017. Um, Zachary defeated Barr 51 14. They will play each other in the second round. Dutch Town defeated South Lafouche 42 to 6. Chalmette defeated Pontchartula 35 to 28. They will play each other in the second round. And East St. John and Central defeat um, East St. John de- no blah, blah. Central defeated East St. John 43 to 15. Uh, Central will play. We'll travel in uh, Monroe to play Neville. Who had a bye? Division two non-select North DeSoto had a bye. Uh, they will move automatically move on to the second round. Director defeated Lakeshore twenty to twenty one. They will uh, they will move on to uh, play North DeSoto in the second round. Plaquemine defeated Albany forty five nothing. Iowa defeat Iowa defeated Grant forty nine to nothing. Blackman and I Way will play each other in the second round. Uh, Westfell defeated Minden 42 to 8. Opelousas defeated Rain 57 to 6. Westfell and Opelousas will play each other in the second round. Abbeville uh, defeated Lutcher 34 to 20. Uh, they will play on they'll play Lutcher in the second round, who had a bye. Assumption had a bye, and they will take on Pro Birch after after the Pro Birch defeated Eunice 35-14. Franklin Parish defeated Northwest 22 to 20. Uh, and Wasman defeated Brulee 26 to 7. They will play each other in the second round. St. Marvel defeated Leesville and what was a huge upset uh, 46 to 40. They will play Jennings 2 1 over Kaplan 34 to 6. Iota defeated Church Point 35 to 6. And they will face the second seeded Sicilia in the second round. Division three, so, uh, not select. Caldwell defeated Birchwood thirteen to six. They'll play the the number one seed Gina next weekend. Well, this weekend, um, Jewel Sumner uh, defeated South Beauregard eighteen to fourteen. Amy defeated Donsville twenty one to six. They'll play each other in the second round. Oak Lewis defeated Wesley forty two to seven. Lauriville defeated Ravel forty to twelve. They'll play each other in the second round. Um, uh, Port Allen and Port Allen defeated St. Lena 18 to 25. Um, they will play Union Parish uh, in the second round. Union Parish had a bye. St. James had a bye as well. And they will play North Webster, who defeated Harrison 42 to nothing. Uh, South Blackhams defeated Port Bear uh, 34 to 16. They will play Manny, who defeated Springfield 61 to nothing. Pine defeated Red River 38 to 16, and they'll play Avoyles, who defeated Kinder 20 to 22. Kinder. It's, it's Kinder, Kinder, yeah. Yeah, Kinder. 
Kinder, yeah. Tw- uh, they defeated Kinder 20 to 22. Um, Mansfield defeated Marksville 31 to 28. They'll place the second seed of Sterling. In Division 4, and then move on to Division 4, not select. Logan Sport at the bye, of course, as the number one seed. They'll play Franklin, who defeated Grand Lake 46 to 13. White House has defeated Varna- Varnado. 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 52 to nothing. Um, and they'll play Walsh, who defeated uh, Bazell 42 to uh, 20. Uh, Generate defeated West St. John 12 to 6. They'll play East Feliciana, who defeated Elton 38 to nothing. Arca- uh, General Trash defeated Arcadia 22 to 6. They'll play the four seed in Hainesville, who had a bye. Oak Grove had a first run by as well. They'll play Lake Arthur 46 to 35. Oberlin, uh, Sunnerville defeated Oberlin 40 to 26. They'll play Mainham, who uh, defeated uh, Lakeview 54 to 14. Homer defeated uh, Delhi uh, 20 to 20, uh, 28 to 8. And they'll play Ho- Oakdale, who defeated East Be- Beauregard 21 to, uh, 53 to 21. Faraday to play, uh, defeated Jones of Hodge 34 to 6. They'll play the second seed in Campbell. All right, moving on to all the select divisions. Old Cross on the bye, but they'll play Jesuit, who defeated uh, C. Bird 23 to 2. And then uh, the second matchup between these two schools, you don't really see the Holy Cross and Jesuit play the play each other twice, and mm-hmm. uh, and the, during the season, you know, they're, and they're huge rivals. And one probably one of the more prestigious rivalries in uh, the state. Um, Character defeated Pineville fifty-seven to seven. They'll play their uh, longtime rivals, Carrico, which should be another pretty exciting matchup. A game that Jays will be going to, of course. Uh, car, a car had a buy. Uh, they, they will play Woodlawn, who defeated uh, Huntington 16 to 6. Uh, Alexandria defeated Bonneville 50 to 9. They'll play the four seed Brother Martin, who, who's, uh, who had a first run by. Catholic had a first run by, and they'll play John Eric, uh, who defeated Riverdale 41 to 7. St. Og defeated McKinley 42 to 6. They'll play Kurt, uh, John Curtis Christian, who's coming off a bye, first run by. Uh, St. Paul's uh, had a first run by, and they'll play Tioga, who defeated L.W. Higgins for, uh, 48 to 14. And Rommel went up to Shreveport. They defeated a uh, two defeat Northwood Shreveport. They will play the second seed Captain Shreve. Uh, a game we'll probably we'll talk about uh, in our next podcast. Uh, moving on to Division Two. Uh, Division Two selects St. Thomas More had a bye, of course. Uh, the number, and they will play Struma. Uh, Struma defeated Northside 38 to 16. Livingston defeated Booker D. Uh, Washington Shreveport. They will play St. Michael the Archangel, who was coming up for first round by. Uh, and St. Michael's looking for their first playoff win ever as a program. Right. Um, yep. You know that's a, that's an interesting fact that I didn't even know until Jay told me yep. a couple weeks ago that mm-hmm. and not won a single playoff game yet. Yep. Um, yeah, Shaw, uh, Shaw had a first round by. They will play Evangel Christian uh, this Friday, a game I'll be going to. Um, should be a great one, Jace. Um, yeah. And Evangel, de- uh, Evangel defeated Bel Air 49 to nothing. Uh, Vanderbilt defeated uh, Douglas 20 to 6. They will play the four seeded uh, JFK, um, one of the hotter teams in the New Orleans area right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lafayette Christian had a bye, of course. They're the number three seed, and they will play Peabody, uh, and Peabody defeated Berkeley T. Washington up New Orleans, forty-two mm. to six. Uh, McDonald thirty-five defeated Landry twenty to nothing. They will play the six seed St. Louis Catholic. Uh, what was it? What was it? What was the, the nickname? Saints. The, the Saints. Saints. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. I thought. Yeah. I was about to, I was about to say the Flyers. I'm like, wait, no, that's Loyola up in Shreveport. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's Loyola. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. another unique mascot. They have like Snoopy as their like their. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. There. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, and Turlings had a buy, of course, and the Rebels will play Madison Prep, uh, who want, defeated uh, Woodlawn Shreveport fifty uh, four to nothing. Uh, De La Salle defeated Buckeye forty two to nothing, and they will play the second city Ed White. Uh, 
the Edy White Cardinals, who are coming off a bye as of the second seed. So they'll play a very tough Cardinal team who had mm-hmm. a lot of rest. Right. Um, St. Charles is their number one seed for Division Three Select. They, they had a bye, and they will play East Ascension Episcopal, who defeated Loyola Prep 34-17. Notre Dame defeated Green Oaks 49 to 14, and they will play a DR Run Woods charter team that's coming off a first round by and third A seed. Uh, Catholic New Iberia, uh, they had a bye, and they will play Lake Charles Prep. Uh, 30, and Lake Charles Prep defeated Pope John Ball 2, 34 to 7. Patrick Taylor won, uh, won against St. Sophie B. Wright. 50 to the 42. What was a great game? Uh, one of the, probably one of the better games uh, yeah. in the state. A lot of, lot of touchdowns and everything. Yeah. Um, actually, true. I think Patrick Taylor had to come back to win this game too, if I'm if I remember correctly. Uh, and yeah. they will play U High. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck to the Tigers. Good luck. Patrick Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at U High. First that, round playoff um, victory for him because they're they're a brand new program. So that was yeah good. yeah yeah of course. Uh, Newman had a bye, and they will play St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas uh, defeated Northfield Christian by one point, 36 Yeah, they could be game two. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Episcopal defeated uh, uh, ML King Charter, 50 to 6. Uh, Episcopal will play Bunky, who's coming off a first round bye. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that should be a pretty good one. Dunham yeah. had a bye, of course, and they will play. Parkview Baptist, and they would hope to avenge their 52 to 46 loss earlier mm-hmm. in the year. Um, what was right. a great game? Uh, Abram One Johnson. Game of the had, year. Yeah, Abram Johnson had like over 400, I think he had like over 400 yards of total offense, including like 175 rushing yards. And then uh, that was also the first ever start for Elijah Haven, who, yeah. uh, you know, the, you know, he's only a freshman, but he had 350 mm-hmm. yards of passing, and I think it was like 170 yards of rushing. Like he was, he, was, he went off. It's like but watching yeah. uh, two Jay and Daniels play at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so, and then Parkview, of course, defeated Jefferson Rise Charter 42 to 8. Holy Sevier Bernard defeated Homer Christian 22 to 8. They will play the second seeded Calvary Baptist. Um, and yeah, good luck to yep. them. <laughs> good <Yeah>. luck. <laughs> Another yeah. uh, t- very talented team. Um, and this is the last one, Division Four Select. Before we start, kind of recapping some of our games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vermilion Catholic had the f- number one seed. Uh, they uh, they had, of course had a bye, and they have they will play Delhi Charter, uh, who defeated Slaughter Community Charter twenty six to twenty two. Um, Central Catholic uh, defeated Central Private forty eight to fourteen. They will uh, play Opelousas Catholic. Uh, who is coming off a of bye, and that should be probably one of the better yeah. games. Yeah, tree matchup. Yeah. Right. You know, there's two teams that a lot of people are considered to be sleepers that yeah. can make to the dome. Right. Um, right. And Riverside had a bye, of course. They will play Catholic Point P, who defeated Cedar Creek 42 to 12. Uh, Covenant Christian defeated uh, Delta Charter 35 to 6. And they will play St. Martin's Episcopal down in Metairie in the New Orleans area. That should be that should be a decent one. Um, St. Martin's, of course, had a bye. They're the four seed. Uh, mm-hmm. Washington Christians coming off a bye as the thir- uh, third seed. They will play the Westminster Christian Crusaders, and that yeah. should be that should be a pretty good one. Westminster Christians, one of the top uh, top passing teams in the uh, the state, uh, led by Brock Stomps. Uh, hey, different and, Westminster. Is it, it's a different Westminster? So they got the Westminster in uh, Opelousas. And the Westminster and Lafayette. I think this is the Westminster. I think this is Westminster. I think this is the Brock Stomps yeah. Westminster. Yeah. Okay. I know. It's, I know it's confusing. Yeah. Yeah, they got two Westminsters. It's. A, it's they got two Westminsters. I think. I think that's the. Let me. Let me double check before we. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, just guys. To make sure. Yeah, just we want to make sure. Because sure. I believe it was a rematch from the regular season game with St. Emmon and Westminster playing because they played earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, why have to be two West Ministers? No, this is this is it. This is oh, the one. This yeah, is this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, Jason. She's supposed to know this one, man. She's supposed I'm to know this. Sure. Cover them. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Making sure we got the right like, cover. Yeah, yeah. I like wrestling with Jay Scott, so it's not nothing like just nothing serious going on. We don't hate each other. We just, 
Oh, you know, if <laughs> you watch previous friendly. podcast, yeah. If you watch it's any previous friendly, podcast, yeah. yeah. If we uh, if you watch any previous podcast, me and Jace, we like to mess each other all the time. Well, I'll make some. I'll make some comments, and then he will say something, and it's back and forth. But that's what that, you know. We're two really good friends. So yeah, the grand guy, right? Is Wes Chris? Make sure we got yeah. the right. Problem. <laughs> yeah, so I want to make. I want to make sure you get the right Wes Minister Christian. Yeah, make sorry sure guys. Right yeah, they they defeated St. Edmund seven to six. Um, and no, I thought you know the game that I thought maybe uh, St. Edmund was going to win, but you know West Virginia yeah. for Christian, you know, and it wasn't even it wasn't even a high scoring game. Which, seven to I six. Think that was, I think that was the probably the most surprising thing about that result. Yeah, um, yeah Glenn Brook defeated Sacred Heart forty nine to twelve. They will play the six seeded St. Mary's. Uh, they'll try yeah they'll try the Nac- uh, Nacogdoches to play the six seeded St. Mary's. Uh, St. Mary's is coming off a bye as well. St. Frederick's up in Monroe. They had a bye. They will pl- they will host Central Catholic down, and I believe it was more. I think they're in Morgan City. If I'm, yeah, they're in Morgan City. Yep. Morgan mm-hmm. City, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's a long drive, man. Long, long drive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Central Catholic defeated Hamilton Christian 26. Anson Memorial defeated St. John 34 13. And they will play the second season at Southern Lab. Uh, to uh, to wrap up the Division Four, not uh, Division Four select bracket. So yeah, moving on to our moving on. <clears throat> sorry, moving on to our ne- uh, the recaps, similar game yeah. recaps. Uh, we're going to talk about five games in particular that stood out to us. Um, the first one we're going to go to is probably the most shocking one, the most uh, eye opening one. What? Was the nine to seven uh, victory for North Shore, uh, North Shore, who defeated West Monroe, and I think that you know that was probably the biggest shocker of the playoffs so far, considering that you know North Shore was five and five. They kind of sputtered their way in the playoffs. They're, they're kind of had an up and down season. A yeah. lot of people thought they're going to be a little bit better than what they were. Of course, they lost one of their better players, Cohen Robotham. Uh, he transferred to St. Thomas Aquinas. Right. So you know they, they kind of dealt with a lot, but. Uh, North Shore defeated West Monroe nine to seven. Uh, West Monroe's potential game-winning field goal uh, was blocked from thirty-one yards out. Uh, it was the fir- it was actually the first time ever that West Monroe had lost a first-round playoff game, and also yeah. because it was also first uh, it was also the first time they ever lost a first-round playoff game. It was also the first time they lost in the first round at home. So mm. kind of a double entendre. It's just a pretty. Uh, historic victory for North Shore. Um, Kyle Williams caught the uh, the only touchdown from North Shore. Uh, Kyle Williams is also one probably yeah. one of the sleeper recruits. Uh, yeah, really talented in the state. prospect. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know, and hey, West Monroe also has a lot of talent as well. Um, Hayden Federico is a very capable quarterback. Mm-hmm. He is committed almost to play baseball. Actually, he's yeah. actually one of the better baseball prospects in the state. His and, dad you know, was the baseball coach. So, uh... A ULM, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and then also you have guys like David Green, who's one of the probably one of the better receivers in the state. And so I think it was a lot people. A lot of people thought that they're going to be a sleeper team uh, yeah. in Division uh, One non select So, Jace, like, what are your overall thoughts about this game? Uh, what do you have to say about the coaching performance of Bobby Sanders out of North yeah. Shore? Um, and what happened? <laughs> like, I mean, that's, I mean, this is the same result. I think everyone's kind of like, what the hell happened? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was, like you said, West Monroe. Uh, it's, it's rare, as you can mention, this is the first time they've ever lost in the first round of the playoffs. And this is like West Monroe fans. I mean, they're like uh, Alabama fans or LSU fans. Like, they take really high school football really seriously like uh the year i saw them in the dome when they played keaton thompson and, and uh, landry walker in the superdome it poison street was filled with rebels fans like everywhere you walked it was west monroe fans uh so they expect to be there and i know that's a crushing loss but west monroe was just a difficult season for them. you know dealing with like the ty garvin stuff from earlier in the year and dealing with an interim coach and uh, it's just it's just been kind of a struggle for them this year in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, but you gotta give credit to North Shore, right? Uh, because 
like you said, you get intimidated. I know we, we had this conversation before, but you get intimidated going to your stay in Rebel Stadium and you see all the eight state championships, the two national championships, all the district championships they've won on the scoreboard. And North Shore, they just go in there and say, hey, this is another game. Uh, you go back a couple years ago, and these two teams played in the playoffs before, mm-hmm. and North Shore – took West Monroe to the very brink. Uh, it was a double overtime in the first round, too. Uh, it was a much higher scoring game. It was like a 43 to 40 or something, something like that. Uh, but what it, it took two overtimes for West Monroe to beat North Shore a couple years ago. So they barely survived a couple years ago. And so you, you fast forward a couple years later, and you see Coach Bobby Sanders and the North Shore Panthers. That that really tells a lot about them. That, that shows you that they're not really intimidated by anybody. And uh, for them to go make that drive up to West Monroe, which is one of the toughest play, places to play in the state of Louisiana. And for them just to go up there and do that, uh, you can you can say what you want. There may have been some missed calls in the game. I know there's a controversial – well, I'm sure we'll talk to the K-104 guys later on uh, about this and what they thought about the game since they covered it more than we did. But – and then there was a controversial call in it to see if uh, West Monroe's receiver looked like he was past the – First down mark when he caught the pass and they ruled him short. You can say all that stuff, uh, but mm. at the end of the day, North Shore won the game, and you gotta get credit right. to North Shore and and their staff and their players. And man, that really shows you a lot of their mental makeup for them to go up there, not be intimidated, and just go out there and beat them. Right. Uh, you know, also seeing Belt Rush Brown, you know, you mentioned that you know it's a very tough place to play, but if you look at some of like the cl- video clips from that game. There really wasn't that much West Monroe fans in the stands. Um, I'm not sure if that you know. I'm not sure if it was raining up there. I'm not sure what was going mm-hmm. on because yeah. that shocked me. Because whenever you hear about West Monroe, I hear about their great fan support and how tough it is to play there, and the stands mm-hmm. are packed. Right. Um, and that's something not only have I heard from other people, um, you know, that have covered high school football or, or that even just enjoy or just fans of high school football in the state. Now, I've even heard that from my mom because my mom used to teach there for about a year when my dad mm-hmm. uh, was coaching at uh, ULM when it was on the Northeast at the time. Right, and, right. And, you know, she said, like, it was just, it was insane how, like, they, you know, they love football. Like, mm-hmm. it was just, you know, it was one of those things. It, like, it reminds you of going to West Monroe and covering covering a game in West Monroe is very similar to covering a game in Texas in terms of how they yeah. view football. I mean, they expect to go to state every year. Matter of fact, they booked our hotels for the season oh, they because do. they expect to go to once. It's almost like how LSU baseball fans expect to go yeah, to Omaha that's a perfect, every year. That's, that's a perfect like, comparison. Right. Exactly. So it was, I think, you know, overall, this was a shocking, um, a shocking upset. No, but uh, yeah, nobody really expected yeah. that to happen. Right. Except if you're a North Shore, and I'm not sure if North Shore Panther fans were even expecting that at all. Dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, besides, probably besides the coaches and the players, I mean, I don't think anybody right. expecting that. Mm-hmm. And then also Coach Sanders. That's all that, that matters that, in the end. If the coaches and players believe, I mean, that's that's all that matters at the end. Right. And also, Coach Sanders is not afraid of uh, coaching the big games either. I mean, he was – remember, he was a part of the Rumble coaching staff yeah, over he there was. when they were had – when they had that run of state championship. So, yeah. he's not – he's not, uh, very familiar with the bright lights. Let's just say he's not a deer stuck in bright lights, you know. Yeah. So, and moving on – Keep in mind, before we wrap up with this and go into another game, keep in mind this is still a young football program. They've really been in yeah. 5A just a couple of years. So, for him yeah. to do that and, and pull that off, that that's just a huge – not just not only a big win, obviously, you advance to the playoffs, but that's just a huge program builder saying, hey, we beat one of the state's best powerhouses at their house in the playoffs. Yeah. So that just will instill confidence in this program just moving forward. Right. Uh, yeah, moving on to our next game. This is a game actually I went to was uh, Central and East St. John. Of mm-hmm. course, the Wildcats of Central defeated the Wildcats of uh, <laughs> yeah. East St. John. So it was a Wildcat yeah. matchup for yeah. the most part. But Central completely dominated this game. I mean, if you watch this game, it was all, this game was on your view. So if you were able to catch this game, I mean, it was very clear that Central was the better team from the get-go. Uh, their line, their line, offensive line and defense line, completely dominated East St. John's. I mean, it was just, mm. it was, just, it just didn't even look right. I mean, they completely bullied them. Uh, yeah. Damon Blocker ran for over 227 yards and three touchdowns. He was actually nominated for a Player of the Week. Yeah. Um, so catch the show uh, later on today. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock tonight. Yep. And then he also had eight runs of 10 yards or more. 
uh, Central as a team ran for over 300 yards. And then uh, Manuel Williams also had two touchdowns, one of 37 yards and one of, I think it was, I think it was seven, yeah, seven yards. Mm-hmm. And then also Jackson Furman was eight for 11. He didn't have to do much, but he was eight for 11. Yeah. Uh, 84 dog. yards, one touchdown. And that was to Aiden uh, Wilkinson. Mm-hmm. Um, so right. they got a lot, they just, they just, they got a lot of big boys over there in central and, and yeah, they, also their defense played well too. I know I mentioned their offense a bunch, but their defense held that one of the more prolific offenses in the New Orleans area to just under like 150 yards of passing. Well, actually, less than yeah, like probably like 120 mm-hmm. yards of passing. I mean, they had, I mean they have two guys who they have two guys on the team right now that have over 700 yards of receiving. So they completely shut them down. So Jace, what do you have to say about Central, Central's performance? Uh, against East St. John. Uh, and then also, uh, could you see, could you see them very well upsetting Neville, which I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, I, I know that's, not, that's, it sounds like a tough task, but I mean, mm. I think they have the talent to do so. I mean, they all remember early in the year, they, they all, they had a very tough game against Catholic. I mean, they, you know, it was 42 to 32, but they played them really tough. Oh, and did. then the next, and then the next week, I mean, they uh, they lost on a game when you touched home with under a minute left to go in the game against Zachary. Yeah, yeah, that that should tell you all that right there. Uh, so uh, everybody's talking about sneaky picks for upsets for this week. Everybody keep an eye on Central and Neville. And another thing that uh, that's going to go unnoticed in this matchup when we talk about it is that Neville is off a of bye. And and sometimes it's good. Sometimes having a bye is good because you get a week of rest, right? Um, mm. But a lot of times you're not in that rhythm. You're not. You haven't played a playoff game. You haven't really got. You don't have like. Uh, you got to get like the jitters out and all that. Central's already done that, so they're pretty much in that playoff mode already. And sometimes early on, Central may be sharper coming out the gate than Neville be, just because they've experienced playing in the playoffs. And so that can make a difference as well. Uh, but I, I mean, I just like the matchup too. I mean, for them to go and play Zachary and Catholic and have a chance to beat them, that's saying a whole lot. You mentioned about their team, and like I, I picked Central to beat East St. John last week as well, mm. just because I thought the matchup wasn't great for East St. John, and it proved itself on on the football field. Um, it shows you where they run the football, the Damon Block. I only saw them one time in the spring. And I uh, got to see them in the spring game. and But they are impressive. Jackson Perman can throw the football when they need to. And that's the thing. They didn't really need that much. It's because Damon Blocker, they were able to run the football. Uh, Andrew Richard on that whole offensive line as well. Uh, but defensively, you talk about Braylon George. You talk about DK Mays on the edge. Uh, this is a really balanced football team uh, on offense and defense. So if Neville's not careful uh, – they could lose. So uh, that's definitely a game to watch out for. But I'm very intrigued to see how Coach Tannehill has really approached this bye week and moving ahead to uh, this week against uh, Central should be a very intriguing matchup. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, this uh, this is one of the games, I think one of the top games in the state right now. And usually yeah. usually a, a matchup between a two and an 18 seed is not really that tricky. You usually say, well, the two seeds got that in the one in the bag. But this Central team's – very good. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, the, the fact that they're the ATC is kind of shocking because really they're more of a 10 seed than they are yeah. an 18 seed. You know, they don't let the seed um, fool you at all, right? Because I mean, the only reason they're 18 seed, let's be honest, because they lost because they lost all the first game of the year. And mm-hmm. if they won, if they win that game, they're probably a 10 seed, they're probably like a 10, like a 10 through 12 seed, probably. Yeah, yeah, and around, that, you know, around that, right? So, I mean, there's they're a very dangerous team. Um, that you know, that also says a lot to the job that Coach Simino has done. Uh, first you know, year. he's yeah, first year. I mean, he shocked a lot of people coming over from Catholic BR, where I believe he only lost one game, and then you know they were. I think the, his first year that they were they're state champions. Second yeah. last year, there's in the second year they went to the semis, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it's like, oh, by the way, I'm leaving to Central. <laughs> Peace out, and yeah. that shocked a lot of people. But I think you're seeing right now why he left. Um, mm-hmm. you know, because they have a lot of talent. They're one. They've always been one of the sleeper programs they are. in terms of talent. And you know, also they have money, and you know, you get those extra benefits that yeah. a public a public school employee gets. 
that you won't be able to get. That's a, a big reason. And that's a big reason why he left Catholic for, for the central job. But yeah, right. I mean, it's a sleeping giant and Semino, uh, he has a really good chance to get this program really going uh, just for the next couple of years. Uh, they're a really good stand with coach Semino being there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Moving on to our next game. Uh, we're going to shift gears to back to well, yeah, we're going to go back. You no, know, we're already in South Louisiana. I'm tripping, but we're going to go to something. So we're going to go to Southwest Louisiana, uh, where Westgate defeated Terrebonne 27 to 10. Yeah. Uh, Westgate ran for over 300, ran for 344 yards over a pretty tough Terrebonne team. Uh, pretty talented defensive team as well. And then yeah. Tavis Gordon ran for 172 yards. Yeah. Um, I know there's rumors, there's rumors in the street that uh, Jabari and Antoine will be back, apparently. Yeah. I thought, we thought he was out for the year, but there's some rumors they might be back. Yeah. Um, but so, Jace, we have this, you were there at the game. Mm -hmm. We have to say about Westgate's performance that night. And then also, um, moving forward, because uh, this weekend they play Weston. Yeah. Uh, that was gritty, old school, like we go about 1940s, 1950s football. That's what that was. I mean, it wasn't anything uh, uh, flashy or no, like uh, all these spread out op offense passing 600 yards. It wasn't anything like that. I can tell you that. Uh, and, and another thing, too, Grant, because I know you caught some bad weather as well, but we went through good weather all year long. Uh, even the spring, summer, no rain. When every LSU practice, you, me, you and me, and I haven't seen any rain going through all the high school games this year. We, we had one weather delay against uh, it was Notre Dame and, and uh, Turlings. Turlings, yeah. Yeah, and Turlings. But besides that, I mean, we haven't had any bad weather. And all of a sudden, the playoffs, it's just a monsoon. Uh, I feel like I just – when I went back in the car, I feel like I just dived in the swimming pool when I was done. Uh, yeah. But it was just – Bad weather from the very beginning, from kickoff to the end. And that benefited Westgate from the very start. Uh, because, you know, Terrebonne's got a lot of really good skill talent. You saw Terrebonne play earlier this year against East St. John's. So you you're, you know what kind of skill talent that they have. But the only problem with the bad weather, they couldn't really throw the football to their playmakers. And uh, Quincy McKay, obviously Colin Billiot, the LSU commit, he was only targeted about three times and he didn't have a catch in the game. So right. in Westgate with what they're going through with uh, Jabari Antoine being out, uh, Ryan, his dad, Ryan Antoine pretty much said, well, we don't really have necessarily quarterback running back, but what we do have are football players. And so what we did was we put all those great athletes say, Hey, it's your turn to get snaps. It's your turn to get snaps. They had about four different guys for touchdowns uh, in that win against Terrebonne and all of them did from the Wildcat. So there were no passes whatsoever thrown in that game by Westgate. So, I mean, they did not attempt a single pass. They relied on their offensive line, and they relied on their defensive line. Uh, Demarion Johnson, uh, the LSU commit, he leads that defensive front. So it was really one in the trenches. Like the game that you went to, uh, essentially St. John, this game was tough. And, you know, Westgate really earned it because they had to block some really good defensive linemen too. Terrebonne, Tylen Bingham uh, being one from the Terrebonne Tigers. So that was a hard-fought victory. It was not pretty. Um, it was gritty, uh, and they got the, got the job done. Uh, now, Terrebonne hung in the game because of some uh, special teams miscues Westgate had, but Westgate's mm -hmm. defense was just too tough, and they're confident bunch of, of kids on the defensive side of the football. So they got a lot of swag, uh, a lot of confidence. So that can carry over in the playoffs. So that's going to be another interesting game when they go up in, uh, to Ruston, and and because defense does travel, so we'll see what how that how that does travel this week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a very talented um, Westgate team they have over there. I mean, they're probably one of the better teams of the state. But then Jabari Antoine went down, mm -hmm. and they had some kind of a losing skid. Uh, but you know, if they're a he fully healthy team, I mean, this team would be in the. They'll definitely have a first round bye, um, just yeah. because they're a very talented team. Um, but you know, it'll be interesting to see how they go up against a very talented Russian team as well, who's. Probably the best defense in the state by far. Oh yeah. So I think so. 
Maybe Jabbar Antoine comes back for that game. Who knows? But it depends he on his looked health, pretty de- like he looked pretty decent before the game. Like obviously he wasn't dressed out, um, but he was walking around. I mean, he, I mean, he looked pretty good. So like, if they, I feel like if they needed him, he would have played. Um, but I, I'm gonna be very curious to see what his status is against Russell though. Um, to see if he's going, yeah, to still be able to be out there and play. Um, because there were rumors saying that he would even play. Last week, um, but, yeah. but we knew pretty early on he wasn't going to play. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. And even if he does play, how effective he's going to be uh, coming yeah. off the injury. So th- those are a lot. There's a lot of big question marks about that. But uh, the way this defense is playing, uh, the way the athletes that they do have uh, just all over the field, that's going to be an interesting matchup against Rustin. Uh, and Rustin has won a lot of low scoring games. But I feel like that Westgate is going to have to win a type of game like that, and they for their best chance, and they want to pull up probably the biggest upset. I know North Shore West Monroe was a big upset, but I feel like this could be the biggest one because Rustin's the right now the clear favorite uh, to win the championship. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I want to say clear, I'm not clear, clear favorite, favorite, but but they're favorite. Yeah, I mean, favorite. they got they still got to deal with the run. I mean, you that's still got to hand. deal with that's your hand. Yeah, who exactly. beat them last year? So yeah, I want to say clear favorite, but. The favorite, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're the favorite, of course, but they're not the clear not favorite. Not clear favorite. That. I mean, yeah. go, there's a lot of great, great teams, great man. <laughs> they, still, they, still, I mean, they. I mean, if you look at the top half of the bracket, they still got to play some good teams as well. You know, yeah. air, airline could be in the mix as well. I mean, mm-hmm. the airline has the number one passing offense in the state. And so Ben Taylor, yeah, yeah, Ben Taylor, Jarvis, uh, Jarvis uh, Davis. And yeah, they got Trey Jackson, who right. was invited to a bowl game. Uh, mm-hmm. Great running back as well, and so. This and this is not even just the airline. It's also some great, you know, some other good teams as well. So let's not let's not sleep on uh, all the rest of the teams in Division One uh, non select Oh even yeah, not, that's like, a lot. Of it talent. would not it would not surprise me if anybody else like if, if there's multiple other teams besides Rustin that wins. Uh, but obviously they're the one seed. They're the favorite. <laughs> right. Yeah. But moving on to another game, um, another North Shore over uh, North Louisiana. Uh, victory. Salmon defeated uh, West Washita twenty to seventeen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the first playoff victory for Salmon in about six years. Jacoby Jefferson had another uh, big game. He had two uh, two touchdowns of forty six and seven yards. Uh, you know what do you have to say about Salmon's victory over West Washita, and you know how big of that, how big of a is for that program? You know, especially considering yeah. the fact that I mean. I know I I forgot I mentioned this earlier about Storm Shore, but and you know Salmon's in Slide L, and there's four different high schools in Slide L. There's Salmon, mm. Slide L, and North Shore, and then also Pope John Paul II, who's who's a yeah. little small private school and a uh, little small Catholic private school in uh, Slide L. Uh, so it's tough to get kids because I mean just I mean in that little area you have four different high schools, which is yeah. insane. So. How big of that of a how big of a victory is that for Coach Shooter and the uh, Salmon Spartans? Of, uh, Salmon, is this, are they Spartans or the Trojans? They're the Spartans. You got it right. The Spartans are Spartans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How yeah, big of yeah. that of a win is that for Coach Shooter and the Spartans? That was big. Uh, I think it's been what six years since they've uh, won a playoff game as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know my dad was pretty much involved in that six year streak uh, when he when he was at Plaquemine and he was the interim mm-hmm. coach and. Beat them in the first round, uh, but that was that's cute. I mean, huge. I mean, Coach Shears done an excellent job with that program, and, and and this year, starting from the spring game, when their quarterback Cameron Dorsey just went off uh, against Plaquemine and for a couple of touchdowns, and, and they put up like 50, 60 points in the spring game against mm-hmm. a talented Plaquemine team. So it shows you what kind of power power they really do have, and uh, and really this year, Jacoby Jefferson just I mean, he just the year he's having. Uh, for his senior season has been been incredible. Mm-hmm. And he's he's actually going to play in a bowl game at the end of the year, too. So uh, he's very special. Uh, if, if you haven't got a chance to see this kid, uh, he is a human highlight reel. I mean, he's probably the closest thing to Barry Sanders we got, <laughs> you know, in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's very fun to watch. And that's what I'm going to be curious, intrigued to watch, his speed against uh, Zachary's speed. Because what impressed yeah. me – uh, in the spring when they played Edie White 
actually not in the spring. It was, it was actually the fall, the fall scrimmage. Uh, but what impressed me about them against C.D. White was the speed of their linebackers, the side-by-side -side speed they got. So, like, guys like Ethan Veal, who's a committed to uh, ULL uh, for the Raging Cajuns for football, a linebacker for Zachary, see how he matches up with Jacoby Jefferson going sideline side to sideline. So, Zachary speed against uh, – Get Salmon speed. That's going. That's going to be interesting to watch. And whoever gets the upper hand there, I mean, if, if Zachary does get the upper hand there, and they can contain Jefferson and that offense, then it's going to be a long night for the Salmon Spartans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, me, you, and Andy were talking about last night. It's be interesting. It'll be interesting match because Salmon's got some speed. The only issue is, will Salmon be able to hold up up front? <clears throat> Because that's really just, been Achilles' heel for Zachary. Right. It's been last year. You go back and look at it, they had Eli Holstein, uh, they had uh, Colin Jackson. They had a lot, a lot of really good talent uh, mm. on that team last year. And what got them last year on their two losses late in the season against Catholic and Rustin was that they ran the fo uh, teams ran the football on them and they couldn't stop it. They punched them in the mouth. So that's been kind of like the the former to beat Zachary like the last two years. So if you can do that and run the football against them, you got a right. shot. <clears throat> That's going to be if, if Salmon can do that. They're going to need their right. best game in the ground game in order to have a chance. Right, but the, but <clears throat> the issue with Salmon is that <clears throat> their interior is not that great. That's what I'm saying. You know, that's, like, that's, that's the interior is not that great. Right, yeah. it plays into Zachary. Zachary has probably been, been better in that area and like moving them up front. The issue is that Zachary doesn't have the athleticism, athleticism like they've had in the past. So how will the perimeter guys handle the speed of Jacoby Jefferson and some of those other cats that Salmon has? So they, yeah, that's, that's a that very interesting good. matchup. That's a that's a big-time matchup. That's a, one of the sleeper matchups in the state. The game, if you're in the Badgers area, you should really uh, pay attention to that game. Or even the, even the New Orleans area, you should pay attention. Or everyone. Yeah. How about this? Everyone around the state should pay attention to that game. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, it, it could happen. Uh, now, Zachary's got, like, that's what I'm curious. Like, Ethan Veal, they got some really good linebackers. Uh, McKnight uh, for him as well. So, how do they how do they deal with that speed is going to be kind of the biggest factor for me. Right. And moving on to uh, our last game that we're going to recap before we wrap everything up uh, is uh, the Mandeville of Sam Houston game. Mandeville defeated Sam Houston 50-36. Uh, Nate Shepard ran for 37 yards and 327 uh, – he had 37 mm -hmm. rushes, rushes for 328 yards and three touchdowns. Nathan Baham, I think that's how he pronounced his last name, he mm -hmm. also ran for another 100. Like I mean, And Mandeville, yeah. uh, I think, ran for over 500 yards of rushing. That's I mean, that's mm -hmm. insane. And they also did not complete a single pass. And it was raining. Remember that in that area, it was yeah. raining all night in the yeah. North Shore. So, so it pretty much played into the Mandeville's favorite. So, oh, we can hand it off to our Division One running back. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, what do you have to say about Mandeville? And do you think how dangerous of a threat do they pose in the future of the playoffs? Sometimes football can be just a simple game, Grant. Let's just mm -hmm. hand the ball off to the Division One uh, star running back. Uh, so yeah. I mean, it, it'd be a simple, simple game a lot of times, and that's what uh, obviously Mandeville didn't overcomplicate things there. Uh, yeah. and, and that's why a lot of times teams that, and this has been a common theme for we're talking about the first round of the playoffs, right? Bad weather. That was kind of the constant theme. So what advantage does that give it to the teams that could run the football and play good defense? That's why those teams. Or usually in the dome because when you get to this part of the year, the weather's not that great. Uh, it's cold, wet. Um, you just have to find a way to win, and it's those physical teams that find a way to get it done. And that was just another one, right? Uh, and talked about Westgate earlier. Talked about Mandeville, and that was another team that I, I've actually picked to get the upset uh, over Sam Houston because I saw Sam Houston play against Acadiana. And they had trouble stopping Acadiana's ground attack. So I knew that wasn't a great matchup for him either. And so playing against Nate Shepard, one of the top running backs in the state for next year, and the Skippers, uh, that was going to be a tough task for him. And obviously the running game, that showed 
and, and it was a big key factor in order for him to get the win. So that was really big for Coach Jones. I know he's coming in from Lakeshore, where he had so much success over there, and now he's at Mandeville now. So that was a big win for the Skippers. And uh, yeah, and when you got you got a guy like Nate Shepard in the backfield, uh, this is a this is a state where you got a bunch of great running backs. We talk about the quarterbacks in the future and how the quarterbacks really look in Louisiana, but running back position, and this mm-hmm. has always been a great state for running backs. It probably looks just as good as ever as it ever, has ever been at the running back, running back. Yeah. Position. Right. You know, ne- next and the next uh, recruiting cycle for the class of 2025, there's a mm-hmm. lot of great, there's going to be a lot of great running backs. Uh, some, some big time running backs and some guys who are sleeper recruits mm-hmm. who, Probably should get a lot more recognition just based off of their production, but yeah, that wraps uh, that wraps up this episode of Protect the Boot. Um, yeah. Joined here always by my boy Jason Lejourn. Uh, Appreciate it, Grant. Yeah, no problem. This re- this episode will be released later today, and then also we will be having K one hundred four from up in yep. Louisiana. I think it was uh, Clay and then yeah, he said Clay, else maybe, we'll maybe get Gene, um, but most uh-huh, likely yeah. it'll be just just Clay. So it'll be be the three of us, and it'll be good. I know we we try to keep it keep attention with North Louisiana, but this is this will be really great because we get a really good North Louisiana, um, you know, mindset and just break down that state uh, area of the state. So that should be fun and get get really their thoughts on on North Louisiana football uh, right now, right. Yeah, and like you know, like we said, great weekend, fo- uh, great weekend of football coming up. Uh, we'll talk a lot of North Louisiana with the K one hundred four guys. Uh, you know, me and Jason are glad to keep talking football. You know, we still got a few weeks left, and you know, it should be great. It should be, it's gonna be really, really exciting, guys. But you know, we have to wrap this up. We got stuff to do, and yeah. always busy, busy. remember. Yep, and always remember to protect the. Boot. Peace, y'all. Boot up.